right, hello 14ers, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 22nd, 2020. Man, oh man. <laughs> I know you guys are itching. I know I've been itching. Our families are itching. Man, people are getting baptized like crazy after our last video with our special guest, our brother Richard in there. It, I, I'm getting emails, I'm getting phone calls, I'm getting comments, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, uh, posts in the forum, private posts in the forum, conversations on Discord. I mean, I'm running a million miles an hour here now, guys. People are getting baptized. They're baptizing each other. They're calling me. They're telling me. I mean, it's awesome. They understood the message of this last video. They got it. People are completely getting it why because just like i understood the eyes of end time understanding we we have come to be revealed and be given sight to the truth of the end time understanding we know it's a 14 year thing we know the lord returns after 13 we know it had to come to the end of the true 70th year this is why everything is happening in the world now and right on time the lord says through our brother Richard, hey, let's get those garments clean. I didn't bring you through all of this, through all of this understanding, just to say at the end, sorry, you get to wait till the rapture. You got to wait till paradise. No, the whole ministry was, was, was built on the beautiful, gorgeous, glorious, white, radiant, clear robe, right? To build up the bride and to wake them up. Well, guys, we're going to continue on this here today. We are going to go into something that just, it. it <laughs> I, I've been praying to the Lord the last couple of days and not really sure where the Lord wants me to go. I'm like, Lord, after such a, a video, just in such a perfect time, after the last two and a half years of everything that's been revealed, Lord, I don't want to just put out some sort of video and, you know, just a bunch of recapping especially when this was the last one that we did. And so I've been praying about it and asking the Lord. And, you know, I kind of felt like that with this too, this revelation of, of when the tribulation will begin. Guys, we know when the 14 years will begin. It begins on June 1st. The 14 years will begin June 1st, 2020. That will begin the 14 years. But we know there's a period of time that comes before it. We know there's the 50 days before you get to that 50th day and the beginning of the tribulation. What about day one of the 50th, right? Well, we know that's when the Lord, as the Son of Man, said he would be here. We've talked about all these things. Well, when I woke up today after being in prayer and asking the Lord, you know, where, where, where do you really want me to go? What, what should I do next? Because you guys know what, what I'm also waiting for. I believe the Lord will give us that 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 uh, uh what comes next you know that we can prepare these people in the final moments to wake up and be ready to prepare them to be part of the bride in the final last two or three days i believe the lord will i know some of you are even fasting some of you are praying for us over it some of you are interceding that the lord would do this having taken us to all the way to this point where we know where the 50 begins, where the 50 ends, and that the 14 years, the tribulation will begin there. Why wouldn't he take us right to the beginning of it, right? He's taken it for us in reverse, and why not right at the beginning? And that's what I know a lot of you people are waiting for. That's what, that's what I'm looking forward to from the Lord. But that wasn't what came to me today. It started this morning, and what it was, was I had this this thought again of revelation chapter 12 verse 1 you know we've done a video and we've done it more than once but even if i can remember what the one looks like we did a video a while back and it was um so it had to do with all of revelation 12. i did a video and the whole video was to show that revelation chapter 12 is the entire 14 years and i can't remember what i named it or where it was here but we've done it we've also broken it down in a couple of pieces where we did one that was a seals 
and we did another portion that was trumpets but being led to revelation chapter 12 and to start in verse 1 again if you go back and watch our videos back in the early early ones you know in around maybe oh late late october but uh, sorry not late late october sometime in in october maybe even in november I had this thing that I kept pounding on everybody saying, wait a second, if that was the literal Revelation 12 sign, why did it, why was it something that we couldn't see? Why was it something very passive that the only way we could really see it was through the, uh, was through Stellarium or a program? why why was that the big deal because the words as i'm going to show you like i did almost two and a half years ago the words don't say that it's something we would passively look at that would be you know something casual and passive no the words tell us it's going to make us go whoa you see that's what it tells us so what was revelation 12 back on in september of 2017 it was the same thing as the blood moons. It was to prepare, to get people watching, pay attention, get them drawn in. But what happened to most of them? They end up falling away. Nothing happened, nothing happened. Ah, forget it. Nothing happened. You see, but that wasn't the Revelation 12.1. And what ended up happening is then... This morning, I was in a conversation with uh, with our sister over in uh, the south of France, and we hadn't talked before. It was our first time, and she wanted a little bit more clarity. She was she was having after all this time she's been watching, she's she's having a little bit of difficulty saying, well, well, where can I show this escape? You know, where can I show this escape? I mean, we could see where the rapture is. You know, we can understand this was caught up, but what about the escape? And I showed it in the mystery right when paul talks about it being a mystery he's not talking about the rapture the rapture is everywhere see it's right here was was caught up we can see where it is and i said lord i said i remember about two and a half years ago almost and saying wait a second and you're going to see this is all going to tie in too with the escape and being able to show clearly the escape and to be able to show clearly the rapture which we know these things but what is this connection to revelation 12 1 and you see what got me going down this thinking today as i'm going to tie it in with this conversation that i had with our sister and to be able to show clearly the escape but not so much that the focus is on that the focus here of this video is revelation 12 1 because here's the thing why is the earth why are all of these governments doing what they're doing now why is military starting to go in the streets our sister over in the south of france she said they're locked down and i said it's man it's like uh, it's like nazi germany what has happened is they can't leave the house if they they need a letter so if they're pulled over and they don't have a letter that's been signed that they can go to the store they get a fine and if they go beyond the two mile radius, that's their radius that they're allowed to go. And if they go, so if they go out without this letter, they get a fine. If they go out with this letter and they're not at the right place and they went to go do something else, they get a fine. They're in full lockdown. So she's much more nervous and much more on edge, you can say, than what I am here in Canada over in Calgary. It's not to that point yet. I mean, I just went out and I grabbed my coffee at Starbucks and I went to the grocery store and, you know, we can pick up a couple things and the grocery stores are still full where I am. So it's, it, it's coming though. We know it's coming. We could see the crackdown. Those of you have probably seen videos with military in the streets. Uh, I saw one, a New York woman, uh, city bus driver that was shared in the forum. She's a New York city bus driver and she saw these 10 black trucks and military coming out of them and she spoke to them and as a bus driver they must have just said okay and trusted her and spoke to her and said yeah well we're just testing to bring it out everywhere else you see i'm not i've said it before i don't say that the coronavirus and what's going on isn't true and, and maybe there's something bigger to it 
I'm saying, Lord, there's something else. We are watchmen and watchwomen. We are watching and praying. We are prepared. We are baptized. We are cleansed. We've repented, Lord. We've remitted our sins in the baptism, the old man dying and the new one coming up. We've received the Holy Spirit. Our garments are now clean. We are watching, Lord. We are prepared. What more is going on? Because you see, like many others that don't understand, there are many others that they, they can see things going on, but we know. We know for a fact that we're here. We know this is the time. So, Lord, what is this that they're preparing? Why are they bringing military into the major centers? It's more than the corona. And I thought right away, it brought me to Revelation 12, 1. I've said before, Revelation 12 is the big overview of the 14 years of tribulation. Here's the woman that appears. Well, wait a second. What do you mean this woman that appears? Well, this woman that appears, she's in the south, right? This woman that appears is in the south. And then she's travailing in pain. Back when you go watch, the, if you ever watch the older videos, like almost two and a half years ago, you'll see I kept saying, wait a second, everybody's also skipping over verse 2. Revelation 12, verse 2, they're skipping over it. This is, the, this is being pained and travailing in birth. This is the tribulation of the seals. The first half. And then there's a great wonder in heaven, a great red dragon. And he has what? The seven heads and ten horns. Well, guess what? That's the mid-trib of seals. Not mid-trib, but it's the mid-portion of seals that we've been talking about. When the Antichrist will show up, for those who watched the live show yesterday, that'll be when, when the Antichrist, when that Antichrist comes. Right? In, uh, in 1 John uh, verse uh, chapter 2 right to the end there are many antichrists that's how you know it's the end of days well that's talking about the first second third which is assad russia and germany but then there's still that antichrist that's coming and this is when he comes that's around three-ish or so years from now this is when he's coming maybe maybe two and a half years from now that means before he comes do you understand world war three has also happened because when you read about this guy, when you read about this portion, and we go into Revelation 13, it says, who can make war against him and so forth. You see, World War III isn't going to last all that long because it's going to be nuclear. Not all over the world, but it's going to be nuclear. So with all the devastation and all the starvation and all the chaos that will have been going on throughout the world for the next two and a half years about to begin, when this... When this one shows up, you see, look at what it says here as well. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. A great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. Well, we know this is the this is Revelation 13 guy. And then we know what? His tail drew a third of the stars. So there's a celestial event going on with an earthly thing taking place. So if there's a celestial event that's taking place with an earthly thing, well, what about Revelation chapter 1? There must be a physical something that they're seeing that's going to bring about the tribulation, or that's going to bring about, yeah, the, the, the testing, the judgment of the seal starting. Just like this is going to bring about the time of the Antichrist on the earth, it's also going to then bring what? A third of the stars is going to be like, right? Well, we know that's the end of seals. Oh, sorry, the end of the sixth seal. So here we are. It's now the end of the sixth seal in verse 4. We come to verse 5 and we see she brings forth what? After her travailing, after her travailing, so after the seals, she now brings forth a man child who's to rule all nations. Well, guess what? At the end of the sixth seal, we see the son of man, right? We see the lamb coming on Zion with the father of who they say hide us from him who sits on the, uh, who's hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne you see and what happens and her child was caught up this is the was this is the rapture 
And we'll get into that in a little bit. This is what? This is 2 Corinthians 12, 4, right? 12, 3 and 4, verse 4. The was caught up. You see? And then what? Then we see there's a woman that's fleeing into the wilderness to the place prepared for 1260. This is now. This is what? If this is the rapture, well, that's uh, Revelation chapter 7. So the seals have passed. The rapture comes in chapter 7. And then what happens? Trumpets are going to begin. So for the first half of trumpets, this woman is taken to a place prepared for 1260. During this 1260, Michael and his angels are fighting against the dragon and his in the second heaven. When that battle is over, he is cast out. When is that? When the 1260 is over. When the first half of trumpets is over. We've showed that here in the diagram. See, the seals will come to an end. There's the 144 sealed. There's the rapture. The lamb is now here on Mount Zion. And they're going to be rebuilding the city and the streets during the first half of trumpets. While Michael is fighting against Satan and his angels. When that battle is over, Satan is cast down. And his angels and so forth and the pit is opened. Well, we follow the same thing. See, he's cast down to the earth. By this time, it's mid-trumpets. This is where Christ, Jesus is cut off. Messiah is cut off. And then what happens? We see it says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Right? Because now Satan has been cast down to the earth. No longer in that second heaven anymore. Now he's on the earth. And what is he going to do? He's going to go after the woman. So what time have we have? We have the six to seven years of seals to the rapture. We have the 1260 time frame. So that puts us at what? Seven years and three and a half years. After three and a half years, that's what? Ten and a half year mark, Satan's been cast down. And what does he do? He's going to go after Judah. He's going to go after the woman, this other woman, Judah. And what is he going to do? She's going to be taken on the wings of an eagle into the wilderness for a time and times and half a time. The final three and a half years for a total of 14 years. And when she's gone for that whole time, the serpent's going to turn his attention and make war against the remnant of her seed. And we know that this war is going to last two and a half years to when Messiah comes at the end of 13. But the woman is going to remain away for the final, for all three and a half years of the end. But when Messiah finishes whooping them, he's going to return at the end of two and a half. He's going to whoop them, cast them in the pit, destroy all of them. And then when that final year, that 14th year comes to an end, this woman that was in the wilderness, Judah, will return to him. Revelation chapter 12 is the 14th years in a big high up elevated overview so what is revelation 12 1 what is this revelation 12 1 that we're trying to understand you see this was look look at this word and there appeared a great wonder in heaven okay there appeared remember revelation 12 on in september 2017 Look at this description here. Let's go down to this one. Actually, let's just start with the description. It means to gaze. That is with wide open eyes at something remarkable. This is what this word appears for this wonder will be. With eyes wide open at something just whoa. And it says thus differing from G991, which denotes just simply voluntary observation, and from 1492, which expresses merely mechanical or passive casual vision. You see, this in Revelation 12 that they talked about in September 2017, it was what? It was simply voluntary observation casual of looking you see because nobody could see it 
nobody had any clue unless you saw it online unless you saw it with a with a with an astronomy system you see it was just mere simple observation and mechanical passive observation but this doesn't say that it says it's to gaze with eyes wide open at something remarkable remember this remember this because i'm gonna this is what we're gonna base this on today okay what we were talking about briefly in the live show yesterday was look the mystery isn't the rapture here it is here is the was caught up but when we go to isaiah 66 this is an exciting one guys hold on tight when we go to isaiah 66 and we go to verse 7 you see remember i said the the thing that caught my attention on september 8th it was revelation 12 1 through 5 with luke 21 and i said to myself wait a second everybody is skipping over revelation 12 verse 2 the woman in travail she's travailing and in pain so if she's let's go back to revelation if she's travailing in pain in verse 2 see she's travailing in pain to give birth and the rapture isn't till down here after all of these events have happened well wait a second we've been taught isaiah 66 is the pre-trib but revelation 12 5 isn't pre-trib it's mid so i said to myself my goodness it's mid-trib this is what i said back in september 2017 i'm like then oh my goodness this is really a mid-trib what am i what am i missing because they taught us that the pre is the rapture and it was the whole church and if it was pre well wait a second it has to be before she travails before she's in pain and i said wait a second and this is what started this whole thing so when we go back and we see isaiah 66 verse 7 listen to what it says before before she travailed she brought forth before her pain came she was delivered of a man child you see before she travailed she brought forth <laughs> before she travailed she brought forth before her pain she was delivered of a man child well let's go back let's go back to revelation 12 where is her travailing in pain right here travailing in birth and pain to be delivered before this happens she's to bring forth are you following so this is the conversation i was having with our sister in france this morning before that so here's our escape it's not here this is the was caught up so if we take this was caught up and we go now to second corinthians 12 i remember talking about this uh like i said about two and a half years ago maybe a little less than two and a half years ago and i remember uh, uh josie wales right you'll see him in the comments sometimes he's been watching for a long time and people would say where's he getting this 14 years and back then it was still fairly new and i was always coming to second corinthians 12 and that's what Josie would say. Well, he's getting it from 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, but I, I'm not fully seeing it. Well, I wasn't fully, fully seeing it yet either. We were starting to, right? And this is what it says. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, I knew a man in Christ, listen to this, above 14 years ago. Well, isn't that important to us now, guys? Isn't that our our aha moment now above 14 years ago i just showed we we showed that video 50 starts after 50 the 14 begins pentecost was the key and here's paul telling us above 14 years ago so what is he telling us about this group he's saying that somebody above 14 years ago before she travails before her pain when she brings forth is somebody who was 
like caught up, such as one, like, sort of like a rapture, and they go to the third heaven. This is that group we were saying in the baptism video. There's a difference that, yes, the blood of Christ saves you. It is your repentance. But if you just want to see the kingdom of God, you can just have re the repentance in Christ. But if you want to enter in to the third heaven, you need more than just repentance. You have to complete the deal, which was John 3 by verse 5, when it then says, but if you want to enter, you must also be born again of water and of receiving the Spirit. You see, that was the difference. This is us. This is, this is Isaiah 66, 7. And then we see John, uh, uh, Paul then says, and I knew such a man how he was, how that, verse 4, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Look at that, how that he was caught up. You see, was caught up. This was caught up is the exact same as Revelation 12, verse 5, was caught up. See, this is the rapture when the Lamb comes on Zion, that mountain carved without hand, that place prepared. He's going to receive them in paradise. We are going before the travailing. So what about this woman? What about this appearing? This something that is to gaze to be gazed upon with eyes wide open as something remarkable. How could this be? Look at this thing. Well, what about Luke? Remember what Luke told us? Remember Luke 21, uh, sorry, Luke 11, when he talked about Jonah? Remember, because we know who the Gospels are speaking to. Luke is speaking to the Bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the sleeping church. And Matthew is speaking to the Jews. That's why in Matthew, the story of Jonah is only talking about the three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. That's for another conversation that I'm still not going to go into. All right. Remember Messiah cut off? Well, in Mark, the story of Jonah says, the Lord tells him in, in Mark, you will get no sign. And he leaves and he gets in the ship and he walks away. He walks away and he gets in the ship. That's it. He says, you don't get anything. Because they're not going to get a sign. It's going to happen and then they're not going to know when they get to go. When they get to go where? Mark is the sleeping church. They're going to wake up those who survive and the, they'll go in the rapture. The was caught up. But in Luke's, listen to what he says. Not just verse uh, 30 and 30, but we're going to go into 31. Let's start in verse, uh, let's start in 11 verse 29. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonah, the prophet. For as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. What sign? A 40-day sign, remember? What did Luke 17 tell us? You guys all know that one like the back of your hands now. Luke 17, when he says, But first must he be rejected, the Son of Man will be rejected. For as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. You see, we're confirmed that it'll be the 40 days like Noah, and it'll be chaos. And those will be the 40 days that the Son of Man is going to be here as Jonah was giving the warning. But now listen to verse 31 of Luke 11. The queen of the south shall rise up in what? The judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. And she came, listen to this, from the uttermost parts of the earth from the furthest extremity, from the furthest reaches of the earth. To hear the wisdom of Solomon, 
and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Are you ready for this? We're going to be given insight, a greater understanding of something we've been trying to, to pinpoint in Luke 21 for a while. You see this queen of the south rising up? She is the earthly representation of what? Revelation 12, 1. She is Revelation 12, 1. She is the one that's bringing the judgment. Revelation 12, 1, what is she doing? She is bringing the judgment. If all of Revelation 12 is the 14 years, you follow? If all of Revelation 12 is the 14 years, then when she comes, when she appears in the sky, she's bringing what? Judgment. What is the judgment? The travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Watch. Go back to Revelation 12. Look at the description for uh, travailing in birth. To travail, look at this, from the root word, which is to pain, throng, especially of childbirth. Look at that. Pain, sorrow, travail, tribulation. You follow? And pained. Look, to torture, pain, toil, torment, toss, vexing. It's the tribulation. The queen of the south the great wonder in heaven, this woman is bringing the judgment. So what is this heavenly representation of something being gazed upon with eyes wide open at something remarkable coming upon the earth? Are you starting to catch it? You see? What is she talking about? Who is she? If it'll bring me back there. She is the queen of the south rising up, bringing the judgment. You following? Well, what if we go to, what if we go to 1 Thessalonians 5? Starting in verse 3, or just verse 3, even at that. For when they shall say, peace and safety then sudden destruction sudden what destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child so here's this woman travailing that's causing destruction so are we starting to add this up a bit more, a little bit more adding, a little bit more adding? And we're saying, wait a second. Messiah, Jesus is coming as the Son of Man. As we know from Luke, as we know from Genesis and the story of the ark. As we know as him saying, as Jonah was, so shall the Son of Man be. And while he's here, at some point later to his 40 days, she shows up. She's coming to seek somebody who has greater wisdom than Solomon. Who is that one that will have greater wisdom than Solomon? The son of man who's here for 40 days. And when she comes, she's bringing judgment with her. She's bringing judgment with her. How can we prove this out? Maybe we can see something in the discourses. What if we go look into some discourses and see if we can glean a little bit of understanding of this woman coming, this woman coming, this, this Revelation 12, 1 woman coming, this thing that's going to be appeared, uh, that's going to be gazed upon with eyes wide open as something remarkable, as something maybe the governments of the world are preparing for. That they're preparing for something. 
by putting the military in the streets to keep the people in lockdown so that when it comes, they can have control, they could be prepared, they can keep as much calm with the people as you you think you can. Because if they declare this thing, you see, we've seen all the disaster movies. We know they're not going to start telling everybody day one. Oh, we're aware. We know it's coming soon. Hey, everybody, there's a meteor that's going to come and it's going to hit the atmosphere and it's going to break up and it's going to cause devastation throughout the earth. How about we tell everybody now and let them go loot the whole world? Of course not. Of course not. But I've been trying to wonder, uh, trying to think, Lord, what is this thing? What is it that they're preparing for? And it dawned on me, Revelation 12, 1, that woman appearing. She's the one that brings the judgment. We've known this, we've skirted it about because we didn't quite see it before. Well, watch this. Let's go into Luke 21. Remember, we go through all this and we see that um, Luke says, and then he said unto them. You see, because this stuff here isn't going to happen to the bride. It's not going to take place for us. It is, it is the second seal. It is the red horse rider is when war breaks out. And it says, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay? And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. See? Well, this is when this is when the red horse rider time comes. The red horse rider. That's not the time of the first seal time. Tribulation has started before nation against nation. So so what's going on? Well, Luke 21 12 says, but before all these. But before what? What are all these? Right here. But before nation rises against nation, kingdom against kingdom, something's got to take place. What is it? Something is going to cause enough chaos that before nation rises against nation, there's going to be a period of time that comes first. And they're going to lay their hands on you and they're going to deliver you up into prisons. Right? We've covered this before. This is a 40-day period of time. That's taking place here while Messiah is here while people are are with Messiah that are believing that he is who he is people that some of them will receive those supernatural powers that we spoke about you see all of this is being explained but don't worry not a hair on your head will be hurt some of you though are gonna die but don't fear it not a hair of your head will perish this is the patience that you possess okay then what do we see and then when you see Jerusalem compassed by armies, know that the desolation thereof is near, not yet, but near. Meaning what? Meaning it's not nation against nation. War hasn't broken out yet. Well, I'm going to come back to this portion here and there. You see, but when we get to here, what happens? He says in in Luke 21, verse 34 through 36, but take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day comes upon you unawares. We've broken it down. We know that that connection goes to 1 Thessalonians 5 3. We won't be caught unawares. For as a snare, you see, as a snare it shall come upon all of them that dwell on the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape what? All these things that shall come to pass. All these things that shall come to pass. So what are all these things that shall come to pass? All of this that's spoken about before it. All of these things. See, but first, but before all these they shall lay their hands on you. Well, by by 2136, it says to escape all of these things that shall come to pass. Well, this is these things that are going to start to begin to come to pass. The bride will escape them all. This here is a group working for the Lord. 
This is part of Smyrna. That's why we see, and some of you they shall cause to be put to death. It's the same language in Smyrna. Some of you they shall cause to put to death. Now watch. We see Jerusalem compassed about. We know that these are things that will take place during the 40 days. And this is towards the end of those 40 days where Jerusalem is surrounded, but they haven't been attacked yet. Okay, but they're surrounded, about to be attacked. And it should be warning to all those in Judea to flee to the mountains before they're attacked and they're decimated and millions are killed and taken prisoner. Many will heed the warning and flee to the wilderness. Hopefully they're heeding the warning very soon. Because why? For these are the days of vengeance that all these things may be fulfilled. Okay? That are written may be fulfilled. So this finishes that time frame of those 40 days. And then it goes on. Now it's talking about here when it begins. Woe unto them that are with child and that gives suck in those days. For there shall be great distress on the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. That means now until the end of the seals and the rapture happens and the time of the Gentiles is over. Okay? That is what it wrapped all up there to say. Now, what do we see? Now it gives us a story. Now it's bringing us back into that time of the beginning. And it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And this one means what? This word for stars isn't the same word for stars that we find throughout scripture. It means what? It's only used four times. And it's a constellation put for a single star. A single star heading towards the earth. A single star. And upon the earth, listen to this, distress of nations with perplexity, okay, with perplexity, a quandary, a state of quandary, the sea and the waves roaring because a mighty earthquake that's going to rip apart the West Coast and maybe other parts of the world. But listen to this. This is what I'm getting at. This is something we've been trying to follow to understand. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken what is the woman coming with she's coming with the judgment but she's coming when in luke 11 she's coming while the one who is wiser than solomon is here so she's still here towards the end, sometime in the late portion of the 40 days. This woman is going to show up and she's going to bring judgment with her. What is the judgment? The events falling from the sky. There's going to be the celestial events while events are also taking place on the earth. You know this word, listen to this. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. The word for uh those things which are coming on listen to this it's the greek word 1904 coming on the earth means to supervene that is arrive occur impend attack you following there's going to be things coming from above that are going to arrive impending attack upon the earth. What does the woman bring? The woman's bringing judgment. What is the revelation celestial twelve uh, celestial sign in heaven in 12.1? It is an appearing that makes people go, whoa! What are people doing here? Men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after those things that are coming to arrive on the earth that are coming to attack on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken you see 
Revelation 12, 1, that woman, that representation of the woman that's bringing the judgment is causing men's hearts to fail them for fear of seeing these things that are coming to arrive on the earth. They're preparing for the devastation coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see, here it is again, and then shall they see, gaze at something remarkable, the Son of Man coming in. See, this one literally means in. So the whole world's not going to see him. Only those who are meant for. Then shall they see him coming in a cloud, single. Do you know that the word in used in the discourse of Mark also means in because he's still going to be in the cloud only for those that are meant to see him? But do you know in Matthew's discourse, when this conversation goes on and it says the word in, it's not the word in, it means on. Why? Because in Matthew, it's when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. See? He's still coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things, see that? Begin to come to pass. Begin to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. It is moments away. You see, the redemption drawing nigh. Let's, let's go look at that in Luke chapter 1, remember? Watch this. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. And verse 68 and 70. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised a horn of salvation. See Messiah there as the son of man. As he spake by the mouth of his, pro his holy prophets. Just like we said in Acts chapter 15, when Peter said, as Simeon said to us, as Simeon had declared, how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. This didn't happen yet. You see, because when he comes back the next time, he's going to rebuild the city and the streets. And he's going to gather to him what? The rest of the Gentiles on whom his name is called. The rapture. So see, he's coming to visit and redeem a people unto himself. It's what we showed in... Uh, Excuse me, in yesterday's show, we brought it up briefly. Oh, do I don't have it? Or it can't be reached now. I showed it with uh, Second Baruch. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Second Esdras. Right? In, in chapter 14 of Second Esdras, when the Lord said, uh, 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 when it says he's coming to take out, when, uh, when the, what is it? When God, when the Father comes, to, he will take out a people from among the Gentiles, from among the earth, and the whole world is in wonder and in awe. And then they'll plan to make war against each other, neighbor against neighbor, people against people, kingdom against kingdom. See, the escape of the bride happens here first. Then you have Assad and the attack of Israel after the 40 days too, and the 50th. Then you have war breaking out, the world war. And then you have Germany taking over. And it's famine of the word of God and of food and water, right? The time of the mark is going to start to be implemented. Then you're going to have the Antichrist show up and the false prophet is going to say he's the one. Why? Because they've been having world war, literal world war. So that's another thing they're preparing for. They know this is all coming. There's going to be a world war. They need to have the citizens under control when all hell breaks loose. You see, and then he's given power to continue 42 months. He's going to have that power to continue 42 months. And it'll be the, the killing of the Christians. Which is why by, ver by the fifth seal you see the martyrs under the altar. You see, then you have the early casting of the figs, uh, which is the stars falling to the earth. This is all of this is Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 5 to this point. 
actually one through five to this point because then you have your 144,000 sealed those who will rule with the rod of iron for the lord and then you have your rapture to paradise then you have six months approximately six months that half an hour of silence in heaven the lord is here on zion and when trumpets begin the first four trumpets are falling and destroying much around the world but jerusalem israel jerusalem is protected it is surrounded and protected while they're rebuilding the city and the streets while the raptured group is in paradise but the whole time the bride is in the third heaven with the holy spirit and when this time ends satan during this battle that was going on in the heavens bam satan loses and they're cast down to the earth the pit is opened up when seven three and a half ten and a half year mark he's going to battle and fight for two and a half years destroying everything and then the lord will return after the two witnesses are killed the lord returns at the end of the sixth trumpet and he will whoop them during that final year trumpet and then the 14 years is over you see guys this is what's going on there's this woman there's this representation of this woman that's coming first that's going to bring the judgment there's a celestial representation on in heaven that is going to bring it and is going to bring destruction because of what is going to be impending falling upon the earth you see this is what's going on this is part of what's being prepared for now watch this this was shared with me by our sister in uh, in france and it was i think a few of you may have talked about it with stephen ben Denoon. You see, Stephen Bendenoon put this video out. I never watched it, but he's talking about, he's very sincere. And he has people that are on the inside. He doesn't give names. We know Stephen Bendenoon has these contacts. We know there's danger in doing these things. Okay, no kidding there is. But we're going to go through certain clips of this, and you're going to see what I'm getting at. They're not only preparing because this virus and, and part of it is really going on, they're preparing because there's understanding of what's coming not by absolutely everybody most people just take their orders right but there are those at the top that know more than just this being the pandemic and everybody being able to to be taken into control if you will willfully give up their rights all of the protesters all of the the gun people everybody with fear of their life now stays home it's the ultimate play let's make them fear for their lives and in fearing for their lives we can take control over everything you know i don't i'm not saying they're doing it all for bad it would just be more chaotic if suddenly people see these things coming upon the earth and sees it coming and then all of a sudden it breaks up and it's smashing into the water and tsunamis come and volcano i mean they want control over the masses first listen to this Certain certain events, events, so, so that, that you, you will never, never pay, pay attention, attention to what, to what is, is really going, going on. on. Okay. okay. The Nibiru, the Nibiru though, as I said, is, is not a big, big issue. issue. There's, There's a thing, thing that we, we call a meteorite belt. belt. As, it as it was said, said to me, me that's, that's the way, the way you call it. it. So, so maybe, maybe there's, there's something, something more, more to it, to it in, another in another realm of thinking, of thinking that, that I don't understand, understand. but that's, that's really, really not, not the point. point. The point, the point is, is, there are objects, objects that are going, going to strike the earth, the earth in a very near, near future. future. And it's and actually in a near, near future in a way like you could never imagine. imagine. Hear that? It's in the very near future in a way like you can never imagine. And he's going to go on. You guys can go watch it for yourself. But remember this, guys. They even, Stephen Bendenoon doesn't know what you know. He does not understand the 14 years. They do not understand that pre, mid, and post are all true. That it's the pre-tribulation escape before the woman. That it's the mid-tribulation rapture after the sixth seal. That it's the return feet down after the sixth trumpet. The world doesn't know this. So you guys must watch these things 
with your proper understanding to discern when these things are coming. You see, when he said Nibiru and those things, that wasn't the concern. You know why? Because Nibiru in that event isn't now. That type of stuff isn't dealing with now. Just like we said in the, in the previous video, even with Wormwood. You know, uh, I, th I think I even mentioned it in here at the, the first half hour of this video. You know, with, um, with uh, 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 Tom Horn, having been given a vision by the Lord of Wormwood coming in 2029. He knows the name of it. We know when it's coming. We know that that's the time. We revealed it in the 14 years, right? We revealed it in the 14 years. When is Wormwood? Third trumpet, right? When is this third trumpet time? You guessed it, 2029. That's in the timeline. It's 2029. You see? Because we have been given the understanding of the timing of events, of the, the big picture, and even much of the, the medium little picture within the total. So when he's talking about when he's talking about Nibiru and that not being the big deal, but there's something else with the belt, and you're going to see in a minute where he says that it's swirling. And what they're preparing for is this that's coming upon the earth. You're going to hear if you watch the video that there's a point where he says there's going to be massive amounts coming. And it's going to be devastation over large parts of the earth. But where they're, where they're trying to set up bases and do things now, like in Africa or in parts of China where the ghost cities are, they didn't just build them for no reason. They believe those are the safest places on the earth. Parts of the Middle East, centralist region of Africa, and parts of China. But America would be devastated. You see, but that isn't what comes right now. That is what? What is, what is that portion specifically? Let's go to Revelation 12. You see, that portion specifically is this one here. When that, not only that Antichrist comes, but when the tail will draw a third of the stars. You see, this portion here of verse 4 is the sixth seal. It is the sixth seal. See, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as, as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind. This is the mighty one. This is the one that they're going to go into their bunkers as it's about to come. This is the one. So he's, he's mixing some of it, but he has some discernment and some understanding as if to, to tell us and to tell the people that Nibiru and those things aren't really the issue yet. But there's something coming first. You follow? There's something coming first. And what is this first? It's the woman. It's the woman, guys. It is the woman of Revelation 12.1. And when you see, as we'll go a little bit further, in the third portion I'm going to show, you're going to see they put this timing from his sources and why they're preparing a lot of these things is they put it in a timing of three to six months. Well, you know where I put the timing? Okay, here we are in March. There's April. There's May. And they, they don't say in three months or in six months. They say within three to six months. Well, when does the 40 days end, guys? Oh, I'm in 2028. So I'm looking at all sorts of things. There's another video uh, we're working on something that Charles had shared with me, and then uh, you guys heard, uh, uh, if you were in the forum, Jared and uh, and Mike, uh, 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 is it Michael Kennedy? And Jared, they've been sharing some things, and Jared shared it with me, and that's one of the things we've had in the background. Like I said, we study many, many things that I don't share everything I know because I just, I, I, I don't have enough to be able to do all those videos. So, But there's something else that I'm working on that I think we will be able to share with you, uh, you know, God willing, depending on time. But, you know, we're right here, right? We're right here. We know Messiah is coming around here. Well, not around here. He's going to be here as the Son of Man. Because why? The Lord gave us the 50-day confirmation. And so Messiah leaves on the 22nd. He's done that 21st to 22nd. The 40 days are over. Well, when does the woman come? 
When does the Revelation 12 woman come? Somewhere in this range. Somewhere in this range. You following? Somewhere in this range. When she comes in this range, what will happen shortly after? You see, Revelation 12, she appears. 12.1, she appears. But she doesn't bring destruction right away. They're going to see her coming first. But the destruction doesn't begin right away. The destruction will begin soon after. Soon after the destruction will begin. And maybe not even all the way to here. Maybe still somewhere in here the destruction takes place. Why? Because we know Jerusalem will be compassed about. We know that Israel, uh, uh, that America must receive devastations more than many parts of the world, but in particular the Western world receiving many devastations that they won't be able to go and help Israel who will then be surrounded during this time, right in here. Sometime in this mid, early mid portion of May, Jerusalem will be compassed about. And Messiah, as the Son of Man, will be proclaiming, preaching, doing signs and wonders. And while most of the Christian world that's left, the sleeping church, while most of them, the vast, vast majority, won't believe that he is the true Messiah as the Son of Man, there will be a number of Jews that will, guys. There will be a number of Jews that will. And they will understand these things. Why do you think in Luke 21 when it says, when they see these things come to pass, they'll flee to the mountains. Why wouldn't they just think they can protect and surrender and, and fight themselves, you know, and have others help them that are in the region? They're knowing, they're, there are many that will believe, that are Jewish, that will believe he's the Messiah. Okay? Will it do anything now? No, but they'll know to leave. They'll know to flee. It's this woman she's the one bringing the destruction and we have a time frame see they said within three to six months you're going to hear in a minute within three to six months it's not the nibiru it's not the thing that's going to bring all of these early shaking of a fig tree it's going to be what comes first and the only thing that we know that comes first is that woman here let me bring it to the next spot now okay let's listen to this the issue is that, 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 uh, that we're, we're looking, looking at, at here, here even, even before, before we, we deal with, with impacts, impacts of these, of these meteorites, meteorites is that the, the earth, earth because of, of the, the radiation that the earth is taking, taking in right now, now the, the earth, earth is, is becoming, becoming like, like an egg, egg that is in is boiling, boiling water, water and, and it is starting, starting to crack, to crack up, up the earth. earth. Billions, Billions of dollars was spent, was spent by governments, governments around, around the world, including, including the United States, States in, order in order to build underground, underground bunkers. bunkers. And those, and those bunkers, bunkers is where they, they had planned, planned to go when we go through, through this meteorite, meteorite belt. belt. Not, Not because, because of Nibiru, Nibiru but because, because of the meteorite belt, belt that they knew that the Earth would be going through travel, travel, traveling, traveling in this, uh, as, as they, they describe it, like a like spiral, spiral, spiral spiraling thing. thing is everything, everything is moving in that direction. direction. There. But, so you but, see that? He's talking about the, the spiraling uh, uh, belt that's coming, the spiraling that they're, that the world's about to go through. And they're, they're understanding where these things are going to happen for the most part. He goes on to say they have a tra trajectory, if you will, that uh, they, they can understand where 80% of these things are going to hit. But not the other 20. So as much as these are safe places on the earth, they know there's still a 20% chance of those things still hitting. You see, we know these things. We know it's going to get worse. We know they've got these underground bunkers. We know they're going to try to hide in holes, but it's not going to work, right? Rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. We're talking, though, here about the beginning, the first part. Let me take it now to the last part I wanted to show you. 2538. 
what, what does, does matter, matter is that our, our lives are in order, order with, with the Lord. Lord. Amen. And the, and the time, time, even if you did decide, decide you were going to try to relocate, your way, relocate is, is not, not much on our side. side. As, As I was, I was told, told, if you were going to bug, bug out, out, you should you be should doing, doing it right, right now. now. I was also As told, told, and there again, again, this is all based, based on uh, uh, a probability, probability, not on exact, exact facts. facts. Three, to, Three six to six months, months is probably, probably what we, we have, have left. left. See that? Three to six months is about what they have left. And again, this is just the beginning, guys. And he'll talk about, you know, uh, uh, you know, those that wanted to bug out should bug out. None of us here, <laughs> at least in Ministry Revealed, none of us should be bugging out. We should be walking around with smiles, sharing with people the truth that we know. We don't kind of know it here in Ministry Revealed. Why doesn't, why doesn't Stephen Bendenoon speak with more authority that this is the season and time? Because he's, he, he doesn't really know for sure. We do. We do. Remember how we counted it? Count 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, boom, rapture year. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. At the end of 2032, which is the spring of 2031, 13 years will have passed and the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives. For his final time. Perfectly like the scriptures have said after 2,000 years. It goes back to what I was saying at the beginning. People cannot understand this, guys. If they do not understand the 14 years, they cannot understand truly where we're at. You get it? And this is why if you, if you guys should go watch this video as well. But he even says, you know, from here on out, he says, I don't really plan on giving too much like this news type things like this. He says, now it's salvation. Now it is about bringing the truth to people in salvation. This video right here for everybody new who hasn't seen it yet. Salvation, not to go to paradise. Don't send us comments and want to argue with us about saying Jesus' blood is enough. I agree with you. My point isn't saying Jesus' blood is enough. I'm saying he told us three things. The first one is repentance. That is his blood covering you. That will get you to paradise. That will get you like the thief on the cross. Remember the thief on the cross? Watch this. Let's show Luke real quick. That thief on the cross, I think it's 23. Uh, with a three, where are you? Crucifixion, and Calvary, offering vinegar. Here it is. See, only in Luke do we find this story. In Luke 23, 42, 43, it says, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. What did he do? He repented right there before his death. He repented and died. So where did he get to go? He only had repentance. Where did he get to go? He got to go to paradise. See? Is paradise a bad thing? Heck no! But there's a place above it. And that place above it is the third heaven. It is the throne room of God. It is the room with the Father himself. And that is where the complete, not just repentance, but remission of sins and the receiving of the Holy Spirit. You see? Verily I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So to even see it, you need to be born again. But listen to verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You just want to see it from paradise? Just repent. You want to be able to enter the kingdom of God in the third heaven? 
you need to repent, baptized in water, and receiving of the Holy Spirit. One, two, three. It was never just meant to be one. But what do we know? The world of church has taught essentially one for the most part. Not all, of course. But for the most part, they've taught one. So where have they sent people? To paradise. This is why I say that 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 about 2%. Where is this about 2%? They are in the third heaven. What was the difference? What was the understanding? It was what we were talking about earlier. Where that first one goes. Those that are like a harpazo, they go to the third heaven. Those that will be caught up, though was caught up. Revelation 12, 5, they are going to paradise. How was Paul talking to them here? He's talking to them as if he's here the third time, ready to come to them. No longer bringing burden upon the Jew. But he's now telling them, hey, you were the parents, Jews. You were the ones that were to lay up and take the burden for the children. Now this time is all over, and this is the third time I am now come for you. Why he's speaking as a third time? That's why he's saying this was the first time when? Above 14 years ago. Above 14 years ago. This was the revelation two and a half years ago. And look at where we are now. <laughs> you see? Look at what's going on in the world. Once we understood the true 70th year of Israel, and it came to the end. It came to the end on March 10th. And what happened on March 11th? Global pandemic was declared throughout the earth. When? The day after on March 11th. You see, guys? And then the Lord reveals to us the 50 and what the 250s in the law mean in relation to the end of days. Are you understanding the excitement, guys? Are you seeing what's going on? You following? We kind of covered a, a number of things, but the key was this, this woman. This woman, guys. This is the great wonder coming. This is the men's hearts failing them. This is the, there's the woman on the earth and there's the celestial one. You see? And this is what she brings, the judgment. And then you have the great red dragon, that celestial one at a boat mid-seals. And who is he? He's the one with what? Seven heads and ten horns. He's going to have control over the leopard and over the bear and over the lion. Just like we talked yesterday in the live show when you go to Daniel chapter 7. And everybody's going to ooh and awe ah over him. Why are they going to ooh and awe ah over this dragon? Over this beast. Because he will have ended the war. Who's going to make war against him? Meaning that world war that broke out is going to come to an end. And everybody will ooh and ah over him. They will be more than happy to because of all of the devastation that will have taken place throughout the earth. See, guys, isn't this awesome? I don't know about you guys. I just get fired up about this stuff. <laughs> just keep doing it. We just, I've been talking for three hours with people already. And we got a, this video and I'll probably be talking with more people tonight and tomorrow. And we're just going to keep this ball rolling, right? Wake people up. Let them know we're here. Let them know Revelation 12 in September of 2017 was just the getting of attention. Was just, I don't mean getting of attention by the one who put it out. I mean was to get people's attention. The Lord was trying to wake people up. That's Scotty's, that's Scotty's great blessing. Was to wake people up and get everybody looking. And then what happened? Just about everybody said, oh, go back to sleep. Nothing happened. Now the real woman is about to appear. Does the bride of Christ need to worry about it? Nope. Everybody whose garments haven't been cleaned, who haven't repented, oh, let me say it in order, who haven't repented, whose garments aren't clean and receiving of the Holy Spirit, guess what? They will see this woman. They will be terrified. 
their hearts will begin to fail them because what she's bringing is absolute chaos and why is she going to bring it because remember as it was in the days of noah so shall it be in the days of the son of man guys when the bride is taken out a powerful force is about to leave the earth tens of millions like i believe it's 144 million people are about to vanish from the earth and that powerful force when it leaves is going to in itself bring destruction all right guys i i pray this reaches you lord i pray it, we sh get this out to as many people as we can let them understand these things share these other videos that we have lord let them let it reach to them let us share with everybody we can as much as we can to let them know that we're here holy spirit open their understandings let them see Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ, his word be revealed in truth and in understanding for all to see and to understand that now is the time. There is no going back to normal. This is it. I love you guys. God bless you. Bye for now. Talk to you soon.